So I am here at Bee Thinking. It's a great store about all about bees, really. And I'm here with Matt, the owner. So my first question to you, Matt, is what what, what made this happen in your mind? What ha occurred that going, hey, I'm going to do bees? It was a bee. Was it indeed? <laughs> Seven years ago, uh, a bee flew into our kitchen, and my wife asked me to rescue her. And so I fed this bee some honey, and she drank and gained energy. I took her to the front porch, and she flew away. And then later on, dozens of bees that look just like these ones uh -huh. uh, were flying into my screen door. Really? Trying to get in. So wh why? How, why would they do that? I mean, what was that logic? So they're, they're amazing, and they communicate. And so the bee that I rescued told her friends about this honey, and then they all joined in. And so that's So they went to the place where the honey was. That's fascinating. Exactly. And so from that one little thing that happened, you decided this is something you want to do. So what was the process? How did you come up with the idea of, of creating hives and the stuff like that? Yeah, it was, it was really organic. I, I bought one beehive, uh -huh. a more standard beehive, and put it in my parents' backyard. And then I started researching and reading everything I could about bees, because mm -hmm. I'm the guy that uh, you know, I really obsess about things. So <laughs> I, I bought every book I could find, I read every website, watched YouTube videos, and then I, I learned that there were other options, there were other hive designs. And by, by different hive designs, in my mind, when I think of a beehive, I think of the ubiquitous white box that you see all, you know, you can stack them up, they're all over fields, out in countries, and in city homes now. So tell me about some of the other designs that you're talking about. Yeah, so there's, there's a lot of designs. Beekeepers are historically tinkers. They're mm -hmm. always inventing the newest, coolest design. Uh, but there are really two others that are, are pretty popular compared to what's called the Langstroth hive uh -huh. here in the United States. Uh, so the Top Bar hive and the Warry hive are the two other options that I, I figured were the two other most common designs, and I would try those out also. And which one are we standing next to? What's the name of this one? Uh, this is a Top Bar hive, or a Kenyan Top Bar hive, based on where it was. Uh, this exact design was invented. And it was from Kenya then? Uh, so it was a researcher in Kenya. I uh, was working there at the time, and they were trying to design a hive that was inexpensive to build. Uh -huh. It could be made from local materials without fancy equipment. And so tell me how this works. So it's, it's basically a trough. It's a trough with sloped sides that come down toward the bottom. And the bees are going to build their own combs from these bars. Oh, wow. So you're going to dump in 10,000 bees like in this box. And they're going to start building combs just like this. And why is that so easy? I mean, what's good about this type of hive? Uh, good things about it are you, you don't need a lot of extra equipment. Uh, you don't need uh, a lot of extra tools and you don't have to lift heavy boxes. Yeah. So this one, the heaviest thing I have to lift is one of those combs, which wow. might weigh five to seven pounds, which is really convenient if you don't have a good back or if you're wheelchair bound yeah. or if you're just lazy like me, <laughs> uh, it works out really well. So I would think though that that would fill up quickly. Is that true? Do you have a lot of bees putting honey in there? It can. It is a fixed size, so the bees can fill up this whole box, but that is usually a good thing. That yeah. means you're going to be harvesting honey. So you'd go into the far end where the honey is, and you'd take out a comb. You'd pull out a comb just like this. It would be capped off. It would be full of honey. And then you can cut it into a bucket. You could cut it onto a plate and eat it just like that. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't have to do a lot of extra stuff to it. It's really ready to go. And what is it then that, like, for, for, for home owners that want to start bees, being in their yard more, what is it that they could do outside of the, the nest, clearly, and the hives? What can they do to really bring bees in more? Uh, you could plant flowers. Bees forage on flowers sure. for nectar and pollen. Those are really their food sources. So uh, if you have a lot of flowers, a diversity of flowers that are, that are bee-friendly flowers throughout your yard, uh, you've basically created a buffet for bees. And not just honeybees, but many of the native bees. There yeah. are thousands of native bees who do a lot of work and, don't, and go without notice. And clearly, in America at least, there's a lot of people interested in bees. You were just on Shark Tank, weren't you? Yes, I was. And how, how did that happen? I mean, how did you get that excitement going? And because it's really affected your business. Yeah, it, it started with an email to the producers at Shark Tank. And it was a long, year-long process. But you know, they, they liked our story. They also liked the, the, the story of bees and yeah. how important bees are to our ecosystem. And so it was great that they were willing to show the millions of viewers of that TV show that bees are important. Yeah, they really are. And I'm, I'm going to assume you give classes and everything here, don't you? I mean, there's a lot of information people can garner when they come to bee thinking. Yeah, we teach classes. We sell all the other hive byproducts. So honey, wax, uh, we sell 
mead, which is honey wine. So nice. we've got lots of stuff that's related to bees. So you don't have to keep bees, but you can come find something that came from the bees. Well, you know, I, I know for me personally, it's kind of intimidating because it's something new for me to try to raise bees. I wouldn't even know where to begin. However, now I have a place where I can can. So you can go to gardentime.tv. We'll click you over to their website. You can go there, find out the classes, come by to the store, see all the great stuff that's happening. Matt, this is really delightful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for having me on.